So hi everybody, I am Bridget from Cowgirl Blues in Cape Town and we are a small hand dyeing yarn company and I am looking forward to telling you about the business today. Uh, hopefully some of you are new to Cowgirl Blues and we're also very happy to have some uh, of our friends back to visit again today. But before I get started, I would just like to introduce you to Elmarie. Um, so I am going to spotlight Elmarie quickly. And Elmer, if you could unmute and say a little hello to everyone. Hi everyone, I'm Elmeri. I manage the online shop. And um, I think some of you were here last night and thank you for your orders. It's on their way. And uh, orders for today, I'm looking forward to getting to them. And we have some nice surprises in the op packets as well so buy lots. <laughs> Elmeri, um, yes. Elmeri is uh, an, one of the very important people uh, in our team and especially for you because she will be your main point of contact uh, if you have any questions or need any information um, and she manages the online shop and you'll find out a little bit more about that. Uh, so just to let you know before we before I get into a little more detail, um, we do have a coupon code for this event. It is VKL September and it gives you 10% off everything in our online store. And we will then also uh, donate 10% to an organization called Ladles of Love. They are a soup kitchen but started off as a very small one, but became a giant organization during the COVID pandemic here. And they have provided about 3 million meals for people uh, around the Cape Peninsula um, since March. And so we support them in the work that they do as well. Uh, so I am going to move on to telling you a little bit more about Cowgirl Blues and uh, showing you some of the lovely projects that I have here for you today. And uh, we will go from there. I'm going to lose my headphones because um, uh, the sound, I can't hear very well. You can hear me better with the microphone, but I can't hear you. So please do just put any questions that you'd like answered in the chat um, and I'll keep an eye on that. And Elmery will also wave at me when there are things that I need to look at um, and address in, in the chat from there. Um, the other thing to, to tell you is that uh, if you don't already know Cowgirl Blues or if you would like a copy of the record or like to see a link to the recording of the presentation, I will put it on YouTube once we're done and I have an email with all of the samples, the links and um, all of the information that you would need from today's presentation. So if you'd like to get that uh, later today, uh, then please send me a private message in the chat and just give me your first name, your last name, your email address and I will then send that presentation through to you. Um, the other exciting thing that I have to tell you is that we have uh, some uh, little gifts to give away. So the first 10 orders that we get today will be getting a mystery gift um, in with their package. So, uh, so do get onto the website and do some shopping if that is something that you're here to do today. And we really hope it is. Um, and then last but not least, before I click off with my presentation, uh, we also have a little mystery gift today. And uh, in order to win the mystery gift, you need to pay close attention to the video that I'm going to show you about Cargill Blues, because I will be asking a question at some point later in my presentation, and the person who answers that question first correctly will be getting uh, a little gift from us today as well. So, uh, without further ado, I am going to remove my headphones. So, even though you're on, sorry, I'm bringing my microphone a little closer. Um, and I am going to share my screen with you to show you a little video about Cargo Blues. Hello and welcome to Cargo Blues. My name is Bridget Henderson and I live in Cape Town in South Africa, where our business is based. The Cargo Blues name was inspired by this photograph and the Tom Robbins book, Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. We have amazing merino wool in South Africa, and we're also the biggest producer of mohair in the world. It seemed like a no-brainer to me that instead of exporting all the raw wool, we should be able to add more value to it locally and then export it, so I decided to give it a try. As I started working with wool and crafting again, I discovered that I really loved playing with colour, and that my colours uplifted and inspired people, 
and it's all unfolded from there. We've grown to a team of 11 women, and Cargo Blues really is a team effort. I'm Cynthia. I'm working in Cargo Blues. I'm winding wool to crochet and knit it. Hi, my name is Kusiswa. I'm the head dyer. Uh, I did this one. This one is the Sweet Dreams. It's nice. You must buy more. Hi, I'm Almeri. I manage the online shop and I'm looking forward to receiving all your orders. So buy lots. We're looking forward to showing you our yarns, colours and projects. So sit back and enjoy the show. So that's a little intro and a little bit of background to Cargo Blues and a, an introduction to a couple of the members of our team. Um, and I am going to take you through a couple of slides before I get on to showing you projects and yarns, just to give you some uh, orientation and background to our yarns our, and our colours. Um, I think you can see my side window, so I am going to hide that. There we go. Uh, so, Cowgirl Blues. Um, we are based in Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, the city is at the foot of Table Mountain and we have a lot of natural uh, wild space very close to the city. And I walk a lot on the mountain with my dog and it gives me a lot of inspiration in terms of, of the colours that we develop. And the light in South Africa and here in Cape Town I think is quite unique. And um, people always tell me that our colors are bright and cheerful and um, sort of uplifting. And I think that that's something that uh, comes from where we are based. We mentioned the team uh, and uh, everyone uh, in our team is a very important part in the process. We're all women, um, that's not by accident. Uh, I, I'm a very strong believer in empowering women and giving opportunities to women. And um, I have an amazing team uh, that has developed and grown and learned so much about the business from working here. And I hope that we'll be able to continue doing that and uh, to continue to employ more people um, because we really need that uh, here in South Africa. All of our yarn bases are locally sourced and locally spun. Um, we work with Merino and with Mohair because those are yarns that are available here. Uh, our Merino is very good quality and so is our Mohair. South Africa is the world's biggest producer of Mohair and we produce more than 50% of the world's supply. And it all happened by accident actually. Um, back in the 1800s, there was a Sultan in Turkey who sent a gift of some uh, female Angora goats to the then governor at the Cape. And uh, they arrived in South Africa and it turned out that one of them was pregnant and she had a boy. And so that was the beginning of the breeding herd here. Um, the Sultan was very concerned that we shouldn't have any um, breeding capacity. He wanted that to stay in Turkey. And uh, the goats like it here. A lot of them are farmed in the Karoo region, which is a semi-desert that stretches kind of from just inland of Cape Town all the way up um, to the middle of the East Coast uh, around the Port Elizabeth area and um, uh, Port Elizabeth is where a lot of our industry is based around Mohair so it's, a, it's a, a beautiful thing to be able to support to a really deep level in terms of agriculture in this country as well. We are very well known for our colours and uh, we have a colour palette of blends that are, are all created by me and the team. We have 30 different semi-solid colours and um, you can download a PDF on our website if you'd like to have a reference to all of those. Elmarie will put a link into the chat. And then we also have 10 standard multicolors. Um, these change year to year, uh, but, um, but these are the colors that are available now. And I'm going to show them to you in the samples and in some of the um, swatches and things and show you the actual skeins of the yarns that, um, that I have here. And then we do a little bit of dyeing in terms of uh, fade sets and uh, unique one-sort type colors. Um, that's just a way to play around and have fun and experiment um, and, and uh, explore. Um, we have four yarn, ba sorry, six yarn bases, and I'm going to take you through them quickly, and then I'm going to uh, cover them again, uh, looking at the samples. So the first is our merino lace single, three merino bases. So the first one is the lace single, 
And as you can see uh, on the slides here, it comes in a 50 gram ball um, for the solid colors and a 100 gram skein for the multicolors. Then we have a merino twist, and this is the equivalent of a sock yarn, or I think in North America you call it a sport weight. Um, again, 50 gram balls for the semi solid colors and 100 gram skeins for the multicolors. And then our third merino base is a merino DK, and this is a fairly standard double knitting weight, um, about 170 meters and 100 grams, and 100 gram skeins for both the solids and the multicolors. Whenever you're ordering yarn for us from us online, you're always welcome to ask us to wind it into skein, from skeins into balls for you, if that would be helpful. So please just put a note in your order, or if you've forgotten to do that, just drop Elmarie an email on elmarie at cowgirlblues.co.za or shopping at cowgirlblues.co.za, and she'll uh, make sure that that happens before we ship it to you. So three merino bases, and then we also have three mohair bases. The lightest weight one is our kid silk blend, 70% uh, kid mohair and 30% silk, 25 gram balls for the solid colors and 50 gram balls, for, uh, sorry, 50 gram skeins for the multicolors. Um, and you can see the meterage there. The Aran single is a heavier weight yarn, and that comes in 100 grams for both the solids and multicolors of approximately 120 meters. And this is a single spun yarn, and it is 20% kid mohair and 80% merino wool. And then last but not least, we have the fluffy mohair. And this is a slightly more traditional uh, mohair yarn. It's double knitting-ish weight, uh, about 200 meters per 100 grams. And I say double knitting-ish because um, there's really a lot that you can do with this yarn from a needle size perspective. And so uh, I, I find it quite difficult uh, to reference it to people. You could use it in a double knitting pattern, but you could also use it in something um, that's designed for a much heavier weight yarn because being brushed yarn, it gives you a, a halo effect, which is, is really pretty. So from there, I am going to go back to, um, to me and the samples and taking you through some of the yarns. Um, so I'm seeing a couple of the comments here and uh, thank you very much for the feedback about loving the fact that we're an all women organization. We did try employing a man once, it didn't work out so well. Um, I'm sure it was the individual rather than the whole gender um, that was the problem. But uh, I really think that it's important to give opportunities to women. Um, women will uplift the entire family uh, when they have steady income and, uh, and a, a reliable job to go to every day. And I think that we're a very female friendly place to work. Um, and I see that someone's just ordered a sunshine, a sunshine shawl yarn knitting kit. Um, and I'm gonna take you to that in a second. So in terms of the yarns and the projects, I'm going to talk about each of the individual yarn bases in the context of a project today. So this is a little different from the presentation that I did yesterday. I figured there'd be people who came back and that it was important to mix it up a little bit. Um, and so I'm just gonna tweak my camera down a little so that you can see the actual samples. So I'm starting here with our merino lace yarn. So if I bring my sleeve a little closer, you can get a look at it there. Um, and this is a knitting pattern called Reagan by Isabel Kramer. Um, it is my favorite sweater pattern. Um, and for this project over here, we knitted it, uh, I say we because my mother and I knitted it together. She did all the hard work and I did the end bits and the sleeves for the finishing. Um, but it is a, um, it's a, a lovely versatile pattern and it works with all sorts of different yarn weights. For this one, we used one of our Merino Lace single fade sets, which you can see here. And I was supposed to be so organized that I didn't need to disappear off the screen, but this is the one thing that I did not have uh, at um, eye level to reach. So excuse me a second while I drop to the floor and find the fade set for this one. Elmarie, sorry. Okay, so here is my, here is my fade set for this one. Um, so one of the things that I have been experimenting with in terms of dyeing is just playing a little more with color. Um, and here you can see um, the lace fade sets contain 400 gram skeins of, um, of our merino lace single. 
and to knit this project, they were combined with two strands knit together over here, and then a different color combination of two of the skeins here. And I think what we did is put um, them together like that. You will find a blog post on the website explaining a little more about it. The pattern's available on Ravelry, and it really is a beautiful knit. Um, I, I highly recommend highly recommend this and the, uh, the lace fades are a fun way um, to to play with color and explore and when you're holding two strands together it thickens it up a little bit so it's not as lightweight as knitting with the lace on its own. Um, so the next project that I'm going to show you in the merino lace single is our pinstripe scarf. So the pinstripe scarf here, I'm going to bring a little closer so you can see it. Um, and I, I, I will give you a demo of how they all fit um, so that you get an idea of the project. So and you're going to be seeing me doing this quite a few times. Um, the pinstripe scarf is a really lovely project if you are new to lace, for example, and want to get comfortable um, with uh, knitting in a finer yarn. Um, it's, the background color here is Tainted Love, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And then we've designed it with mini balls of all of the different striped sections, so that the colors, um, you don't have to buy a full 50 grams of something that you're only going to use a small amount of. Um, and in terms of, of how big it is, uh, you can see it works very well as a lightweight scarf. Um, you can double it um, if you're looking for something that you can wear in um, actually in a scarf, uh, you know, under a coat or something like that, or as the weather cools off. I know that many of you are going into your winter as we head out of ours and into the summer. Um, but it's a very popular and, um, and lovely project to work on um, and makes a beautiful gift as well. Um, so that is our pinstripe scarf. And the background color there that I mentioned was Tainted Love. And Tainted Love is a, a lovely yarn combination of mostly pinks and reds. Um, here you can see the Tainted Love in Kid Silk knit with some different color lace weight backgrounds. And over here you can see the actual skein. So that gives you an idea of how the colors die up. Um, the colors show up a little differently on the mohair, especially on the kid's silk, um, because the mohair takes the color somewhat differently. And I'm going to show you that here. So that gives you an idea of those ones. So that one's Tainted Love. Now I have to have a little system for moving the things I've showed you. Um, so that was our first project, Tainted Love. The next one that I'm going to show you is our Sunshine Shawl Knit Kit, which has been extremely popular. Um, and uh, this one is knit in our Merino Twist yarn. So the Merino Twist is a sock weight or a sport weight. And the background color here is called Cape Carnival. And to give you an idea of the size of this project, you know, it's a nice um, shawl size that obviously you can, you can also wear uh, as, um, as a sort of statement piece if you are heading out wearing a jacket. Um, and the way we've created this kit is um, it's 400 grams of yarn. So 200 grams, 200 gram skeins of the multicolor background and then 200 grams, but split across all of the different individual colors. And if I hold that up again, um, you can see that as you get towards the uh, pointy end down here, you're using a very small amount of each of the solid colors in the project. And so again, uh, you don't need an entire ball of those, um, each, each of those ones. So that's the Sunshine Shawl Knit Kit. Um, and I mentioned that the background color there was uh, Cape Carnival. And so here I have Cape Carnival to show you. Um, it really is a, a bright and fun color combination with little bits of almost all of our colors. And the name is inspired by the carnival that happens in Cape Town on the 2nd of January, um, where uh, music 
uh, groups perform and dress up in very bright outfits. So that is Cape Carnival. Uh, the next project that I'm going to show you, and that was in our Merino Twist. I'm going to show you a couple more in Merino Twist. Um, someone mentioned the baby blanket, and that's this one over here. So this is the beehive, the beehive baby blanket. Um, we've got it in three different color combinations, and it's a nice size um, as a very versatile a cot blanket, travel blanket. Um, and someone yesterday actually said that she bought two kits in order to make a bigger project. Um, and this one has got uh, the different solid colors in the background. And uh, if I bring it a little closer, you can see one of our multicolors um, in the double knit. This is called Signs of Spring. And why a beehive in the name? Um, so the little uh, shapes, the hexagons made me think of, um, of honeycomb. And then it's got this little bobble stitch in it here. And those felt like little bumblebees. Very nice for little baby fingers to play with. And I have a new niece who is nearly three months old. And she's been sleeping under this since she arrived home. And as she's starting to get into chewing her fingers and playing with things, I think this is going to be a fun, um, fun thing for her to, uh, for her to, um, to uh, explore the sort of tactility in things. Um, yes, a multicolor that goes with this one. Um, so here I've got uh, signs of spring. In, um, in this project here. And I'm going to show you the Signs of Spring yarn, which you can see there. Um, it's uh, greens with a little dash of pink, those spring flowers starting to appear. And we've also worked up some swatches where we've done the Kids Silk Knit Double with them. Um, with a solid lace background uh, so that you can get an idea of if you were to look at a project, for example, like the Reagan, um, the Reagan cardigan that I showed you in the beginning, and um, that you could very easily knit with the, um, the lace single and the, the kid silk held double. Um, okay, Almarie, I'm just going to ask you to make a note about um, a uh, someone's uh, just put a comment in about changing an order. So it's no problem at all to change your order. Um, if you would like to go ahead and place second order, you can do that and we'll just submit a refund through PayPal for you uh, for, the first, um, for the first purchase. Otherwise, you can wait, send Elmer an email on shopping at cowgirlblues.co.za and uh, she can help you with that on, on Monday um, when, we are, when we're back in the studio. Um, okay, so that was Signs of Spring. Um, while we're talking about orders, I am just going to mention we ship worldwide with DHL uh, and they have been fantastic uh, shipping partners, very efficient in getting projects uh, to your door to get started fast as possible. Um, so I showed you the baby blanket, but I also want to show you this little cardigan that my mum knitted, um, also using our merino twist. Um, it's a beautiful weight of yarn for knitting with for babies and children especially. It is super wash treated, so you can put it in the washing machine. And here uh, you can see this is knit up in Tambourine Man. And Tambourine Man is another one of our multicolor combinations. Um, I am holding up the skein in the Merino DK, um, although the jersey was knit in Merino Twist. Um, and I think that these old fashioned knitting patterns are such a beautiful way to um, to showcase really contemporary yarn colors um, because this looks so different knit like this versus uh, in a solid color. Um, so Tambourine Man, um, our swatch doesn't have um, all of the colors showing up, but you can see that there are flecks of, of colors um, in the skein. And if you're looking on our website, you can see the pictures of the swatch um, in the individual products. And you'll also get a list of which colors are in uh, knit, uh, sorry, dyed into the skein. So that um, if you're looking for a solid contrast color to go with something, you can see how to match it up. Um, and with this one, I've got a swatch in both the Kid Silk and um, the Merino Twist, just to give you an idea of how the different yarn bases take the color um, and how that shows up. 
So that is Tambourine Man. Um, the next sample that I'm going to show you is still in the Merino Twist. Yes, it is one of our best-selling yarn bases. Um, it's so versatile, and I think that, um, that that's why a lot of designers design for, um, for Merino Twist. So this one, though, is, um, again, one of our fade sets. Um, this pattern is called the Le Pouf Cardigan. Uh, it's designed by Beata Jezik from uh, Hedgehog Fibers. It's a free pattern that's downloadable off Ravelry. And there is also a pullover version um, that's close at the front. So this was my first experiment with uh, knitting up a fade set. And I really liked how it knitted. Um, it's knit from the top down. And you're always knitting with two strands of yarn. Um, and one of our new color combinations that we've got in fade sets in the Merino Twist is this one over here, which is called Kiss by a rose, um, and you can see that it goes from greens through to pinks on, on the other side over there. Um, uh, someone's asked if I could say the name of the pattern again. It's, uh, this one is the Le Pouf cardigan uh, by Hedgehog Fibers, and there is also a Le Pouf sweater. Um, my version was, uh, um, I knitted the large sweater, which was um, perhaps just a teensy, bit, um, a teensy bit big for me. I think I would have preferred it in a medium, uh, but I didn't measure very well. And I used about 650 grams of wool. There is 600 in one of our fade sets, so you would need to pair it um, with a little extra color. And I did that by putting um, some solid mustard into the sleeve because it went with the, um, the true colors uh, combination that I had here and that then faded into under pressure and I put a, a second ball of, uh, of solid into the edging over here. So taking two 50 gram balls of solid colors that fit in with your, um, your fade set is a nice way to, to add on to, um, to the yarn meterage. Um, and that is going to take me into two of the, uh, the multicolors that are in this, um, in this sweater. Um, the first one is our under pressure. Um, and so the under pressure is the gray that you can see in this section over here. And this is what the under pressure looks like as a, as a knit. You can see the skein and then the individual colors. Um, this, I think, is going to be my next, uh, the next yarn color that I use in uh, project development. We've got a scarf work in progress in, um, in the lace weight version of this, but I've got some DK here at home that I think I might need to get knitting with. Um, and uh, to give you an idea of how that mixes with some of the other solid colors, um, you can see here, this is the Kid Silk Under Pressure. Let me just show you that one. Um, this is the Kid Silk Under Pressure, and um, it's on different color backgrounds, as you can see here. Okay, so someone has asked, uh, you would like some advice on how to make up a fade set. Um, yes, I can definitely help you with how to make up um, a fade set. Can we come back and talk about that um, towards the end, and then we can just look at, at what's, what's there and, and how to go from there? Um, so one of the other colors that's in um, the sweater over here is the Sweet Dreams. And I've got a couple of swatches that I want to show you of the Sweet Dreams. Um, so sometimes it's nice to see how that color would mix with the solid, which you can see over there, good for striping. Um, and then here you can see the Sweet Dreams with some of the, the Sweet Dreams and Kid Silk with some lace solids. And here are some of the skeins. So that gives you an idea of what the actual yarn looks like before it's knit up. So there is a lot of um, uh, the mustardy true colors in this one. And I'm gonna show you on our Kid Silk Joys of Spring Shawl um, how that how that yarn knits up. So next is the next project I have to show you is our Joys of Spring shawl. 
Um, and this one, we have just recently re-knit um, in this colorway. And I love how it's turned out. Um, it is kid silk as the, um, as the background multicolor um, with two lace single skeins included. And you get an idea of the, um, the size of the shawl and the different ways that you can wear it. Um, I don't know if any of you are fans of the Outlander TV series. Um, you may not know that uh, I think it was season three, the season where they're in the Caribbean, was all shot here in Cape Town. Um, I do confess to having spent quite a bit of time uh, looking for Jamie walking on the mountain and I did not see him. But, um, but uh, yes, they did shoot some of that here. And so you can wrap um, you know, this has got nice long ends that you can wrap and tie around at the back. Um, and it's also very light. So if you wanted to just to wear it as a scarf, you know, you can bunch it and, um, and wrap a few times uh, for a thicker, warmer uh, knit um, or, um, or loosen, it, loosen it up and take it from there. Um, so this is True Colors, is the background base that I have got here. And um, here you can see what the True Colors looks like as a yarn and in a swatch there. So it is quite mustardy, but um, it works, you know, I love mustard as a color. And it combines so beautifully with, um, with different different colors. So I can show you that there, um, you know, if you wanted to mix two colors in together. Um, but I also love the subtlety. I mean, yellow is not always my color of choice, but I love the combination of the lemon with the um, True Colors Kid Silk on the background here. Uh, so that was True Colors and the shawl project is called The Joys of Spring. Um, we do have two other colorways that we've made up for the joys of spring. Um, and I have some little swatches to show you, which you can also see on the website. When we originally did this pattern, it was in this uh, green combination. And so we've re it with the Come a Chameleon uh, green um, and uh, Orchid Blush and Rainforest as the contrast colors. Um, and then we've also done uh, a swatch set of the nine to five in the kid silk um, with uh, seagrass, I think, or celadon, I'm not entirely sure, and uh, carrot juice as the contrast colors. Um, someone's asked, what is the yarn weight for the shawl? Um, so the Joys of Spring shawl, uh, this one is, um, it's the Kid Silk, is the, um, sorry, I'm just going to hold it a little closer, Kid Silk is this one over here, and then it's knit with contrast colors in merino lace single. And it is available as a knit kit on the website, so um, so you can just go and have a look in the kit section and you'll find it there. Um, with all of our knit kits, you're welcome to change the colors if you would prefer it in a different color combination, even if it's not one of the ones we have there. And um, because this one is, um, uh, I think, uh, Maria, I stand to be corrected. I think it's two skeins of the kit silk um, and two balls of lace. It might, yeah, I think it is. Um, and uh, so you could easily swap it out for different color combination and you're welcome to drop us an email or contact us on WhatsApp. Omri's giving me a thumbs up, two skeins of kids silk. Um, so you're welcome to contact us on WhatsApp or email if you need some help selecting some colors um, because we can always put them together and then send you a picture so that you can see what they look like when they're actually next to each other. Um, so that is the Joys of Spring shawl. Um, the next one is just the kid silk. So uh, I've talked you through our three merino yarn bases. Um, the, uh, the merino lace single, the merino twist, and the merino DK. And then we have three uh, mohair yarn bases. And so the kid silk, which was in that one, um, is one of our very popular ones. We do uh, a lot of kid silk in Europe especially. Um, and this project is called the cobweb shawl. Um, and you can see it's very cobweb light and it's got these little tuck stitches which give a sort of spiderweb type effect. Um, so this project uh, is a nice shawl or wrap 
and you can see size wise uh, it's got it's got a lot of um, a lot of give um, it makes a beautiful uh, piece to wear as a wrap or a shawl um, it's also very nice Sorry, my more wrap and shawl styling. Um, it's also beautiful as a scarf because it's kid silk and it's knit on a reasonably big needle. It's very light and loose. Um, and so you can, you can dress it uh, to wear it as a scarf, um, obviously, you know, depending on the weather and, and how warm um, or cold it is. Um, you can bundle up as you are outdoors. Um, and then unravel and unwrap and um, and turn it into part of your outfit once you're indoors and you don't need the scarf on. Um, we've done it uh, with this particular color combination, um, but obviously uh, it is four balls of the kid silk, and you could very easily mix and match with any colors that um, that you choose. So that is the kid silk. So the next of our mohair yarns. Oh no, one more, sorry. I'm gonna show you this one, but I'm not gonna put it on. Um, so this is the same Reagan sweater that I showed you um, in my lace fade set. There you can see it on a hanger to get an idea of, um, of what it looks like. And this is knit in two strands, uh, the lace single held together with a multicolor kid silk. Um, someone has asked how many yards in the kid silk. Um, it is, in fact, if you just give me one second, I'll just go to my slides and tell you. Um, but yeah, I don't have a ball of it here. Hang on, I've got a scan. Um, so uh, I can tell you the meterage. So it's about 450 meters in a 50 gram skein or 200 meters in a 25 gram ball. And I think the yardage is a little bit more than that um, if you're converting to yards. Um, yes, so that is the Reagan cardigan, um, beautiful knit in the uh, lace and kid silk held together. It works really well. So the next yarn that I want to talk to you about is our Aran single. Um, and this is a beautiful winter weight um, pullover that I have just knitted. Um, I did it as a knit along uh, for a friend of mine. Um, who wanted to knit herself a sweater and uh, she is not a terribly confident knitter and hasn't knitted for a while. Um, and so I said I would help her. Um, and so this is the Strathcona sweater um, by Tara Morrison. Um, and Elmery will put the link um, in, the, in the chat. Um, and if I come a little closer and show you, you can see that it is um, the Aran. It's actually three strands of Aran held together. So my sweater was the large size, plus I put in a bit of extra length, um, and it took 10 balls of Aran. Um, so it weighs a kilogram, uh, but if only we were going into deep winter, I mean, it just feels completely and utterly fantastic. Um, and this colorway is our um, nine to five. Um, so I'm gonna show you the nine to five here. There you can see, um, the actual skein. So this is one of the iron single skeins. And then here you can see how it knits up. And you can see the swatch is pretty good compared to the actual sweater. And um, when you look at it, uh, so if I show you these ones, um, where we've got the little swatches of the kid silk with the solid, and um, you could imagine for a sweater like this, uh, you could, for example, put one of the strands of natural in with two of the nine to five for a more subtle look or only one nine to five with the natural. So it's a really nice way to be able to play with color um, by knitting multiple strands together because you can increase the impact of the, um, of the multicolor or of the solid color or kind of tone it down, almost like turning the volume up and down depending on what it is um, that you are wanting to, to make. Um, uh, sorry, so someone's, okay, someone's got a question about the, um, about the baby blanket and I am going to, uh, I will come back to that question. I think, Michelle, we might need to answer you in an email. Um, 
sorry, so a question about the baby blanket. Um, so when you're knitting the baby blanket, I'm just going to hold it up here so that you can see. Um, you are starting with just, you never knit two strands together, but there is some slip stitching involved as you are knitting across the pattern. Um, and then someone else has asked, uh, what yarn weight was used in the Lepuf cardigan? So the Lepuf cardigan is designed to be knit as a fade. So if you're knitting it as a fade, then you're always holding two strands together. And this is two strands of our Merino twist weight. If you wanted to just knit it in one color or to knit it with stripes, then you could use the Merino DK and you would only be knitting a single strand. So it just depends on how you wanted to, how you wanted to knit it. Um, so this one, Strathcona sweater, I, I'm going to go on from there. And that was the, um, the Aaron single in our yarns. And then last but not least, I have the fluffy mohair. Um, and this is a beautiful pattern that I, um, I did a test knit for. Um, the pattern is by Eri Shimizu on, uh, on Ravelry. She's Eri TML. Um, and it is called Veer. And Veer in Dutch means feather. And these little pattern details are the feathers uh, floating down. So I went quite off piste uh, with the colors. I'm not terribly good at sticking religiously to the instructions. Um, and I knit in a multicolor background and then I used a solid color and a different yarn. Um, for the feathers. I used our Aran single for those to give a little bit more contrast in the color. And then because I had quite a lot left, um, you don't use an awful lot for the feathers, I did my cuffs in, um, in the Aran single as well. Um, so last but not least, so this is the fluffy mohair. Um, I am going to do one more project and then I'm going to hold up the sunshine shawl again. So last but not least on my projects is Come a Chameleon, um, our green colorway. Um, and this is a hot off the press shawl design. It's still got my stitch marker in it because I've got to just finish counting. Um, and I showed it as a work in progress yesterday and I have just finished it. Today, still a few loose ends, trying to decide if it needs a tassel. Um, and uh, this is knit in Kama Chameleon, which is our beautiful uh, green colorway. Um, and you can see that the solid stripe combinations there inspired my choice of color um, when I was putting in um, the stripe here. And this project, uh, it is a new knit kit, which is available on the website. It's one skein of DK, one ball of the Merino twist, and then one skein of uh, the, fluffy, the fluffy mohair. Um, and I really love how it's turned out. I love the textural differences of the different yarns. Um, and it's a, fun, it's a fun project. And it's called the Good Karma Shawl. Um, the Karma Chameleon colorway uh, inspired that one. Um, so someone's asked to see the Shanchan shawl again, which I'm going to hold up for you now. But I also promised that there was going to be a mystery gift giveaway, and now is the time for that. Um, so if you're watching the video, then what you need to answer in the chat, and the first person who answers correctly is going to get the gift. Um, I have a fur baby. Can you tell me what my fur baby is? So um, anyone who knows, ah, oh, Deb, you got it, a husky. She's charging around here backwards and forwards because she thinks it's dinner, dinner and walkies time. So yes, my fur baby is Mira the husky and Deb Elmery will get your email address and we will send you um, a, a mystery gift. Um, and I'm delighted to hear you have one yourself. Um, they are such beautiful, such beautiful animals. She's a pack animal and part of our, uh, part of our cowgirl boost family. She often comes to work with me. Um, so someone asked to see the sunshine shawl colors again. And I'm going to hold those up here. So would you like me to hold up the individual balls? Because I can do that. But basically it starts over here with uh, lipstick, um, aubergine, camps bay, uh, guinea fowl, 
then it moves on to dusty rose, mustard, rainforest, orchid blush, and finally finishes with a teensy little bit of indigo. <laughs> Bridget, do you mind? I know I know I asked the question yesterday. So I'm working on this. Not and my only question is when she's talking I guess me. the lipstick talking now, you would certainly be able to hear her because she's lying on the floor um looking at me. Uh can I hold up so, the I'm sure. Do you yes, hear me? Um Yes, once we're finished with shawls, I can always move the camera and give you a little intro to the dog. Okay, so here is the pinstrap, the pinstrap scarf. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just going to stand to one side. I don't know if it's helpful that you can see it from the back. So this is the Tainted Love as the background color. Um, you could choose to put in a different color in the background color. Um, uh, so you've asked about, is it possible to order the, um, the sunshine stripes with a different order or size of the stripes? Um, unfortunately, it isn't because um, we make up, you know, we divide up the balls to make up the kits in a particular way. Um, what you could do if you wanted to do them differently, um, I'm just thinking, you could send an email to Elmarie and uh, tell her which colors you were wanting in the bigger stripes. You could buy a couple of extra solid balls of the 50 gram balls so that you get some of the bigger stripes um, in, in different, you know, for example, if you wanted to switch, I'm just gonna hold it up and show you. If you wanted the indigo stripe at the bottom, when the indigo is a tiny little bit here, then add an extra ball of indigo into your order and um, you could then, you'd then have enough for the indigo over here and uh, anything that you move in this direction, you're gonna have enough yarn for in the, um, in the mini balls because it was designed to have enough for here. So if it's a shorter stripe, it'll be fine. Anything that you wanna move this way um, is going to be problematic, um, particularly when you get to sort of the smaller sections over here, I don't think that you'll have enough to do many stripes here. If you are comfortable kind of mixing things around and playing with it yourself, if you don't mind the fact that the stripes would be different widths, then you could, um, you know, if you wanted to put this color onto this edge, you could just do a narrower stripe here and fewer of these before you alternated and changed. changed and then make it up with a wider stripe of a different color. You know, then when you move this ball over here, you could make a wider strap to fit it in. So, uh, yes, so Eileen's asked uh, um, the lipstick section where you start. Um, all of the other straps have got a starting section of the alternating stripes, then a solid band, and then an alternating color, except for the lipstick which starts part way through. Um, and then obviously the, um, the indigo finishes, I'll show it to you on the right side, the indigo finishes at the end there as you finish. Um, so I don't know if I answered the question, when I held up the pinstripe shawl, it is in the Merino lace single. Um, yes, so the pinstripe shawl is in the Merino lace single. Um, are there other, I've, I've sort of worked my way through everything, I think. Um, are there other questions that people have or projects that you want to see, something you'd like me to hold up again um, that you can have another look at? Um, and I'm very happy to, to oblige. So do just, um, just let me know. Um, I can put some headphones on if uh, I can find them. Um, if anyone's got if anyone's got questions they'd like to ask, um, you are very welcome to ah um, the faded sweater and the good karma opened. Yes, so good karma opened. I'm gonna start there. Um, so here is the good karma shawl opened um, to give you an idea of that. If I hold it. A little closer. Um, so it's a detailed 
it's actually only a two row repeat for this pattern here and then a, a garter stitch and then a um, stocking stitch. Um, then someone has also asked, um, would 50 grams be enough for the larger stripe on the sunshine shawl? Yes, it would. I think it's a 40 gram mini ball in the kit. So 50 grams would definitely be enough for that. Um, I'm just looking through. Someone has asked um, the faded sweater. Yes, that was the Le Coupe cardigan. That's this one here. Is that right? I think it's Husky Lady asking me. Um, no, it's not. It's Denise. Um, and Husky Lady is dead. Uh, so this is the Le Puff fade sweater and if you've got time to stay on the call uh, once we've finished I'm very happy to talk to you about about how to plan uh, um, a fade set for this and um, for this one actually I didn't knit it with an organized fade set um, I made my own as I was going along so you can see there's a little bit of a, um, a sort of slightly more blunt transition over here um, because I started with, at least I finished with charcoal and under pressure. So I started with mustard and true colors and then I mixed the true colors with sweet dreams, sweet dreams with under pressure and under pressure with charcoal and some solid mustard at the top. Um, and then someone else has also asked, would it be possible to lengthen the faded Le Puff sweater? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's knit from the top down, so it's very easy to fit it as you go along um, and to decide at what point you want the armhole starting. And once you're into this section here, you could just extend it longer and extend the sleeves or alternatively crop it shorter if that is your preference. Um, the only thing that you need to take into account is the amount of yarn that you would need. So if you were buying a fade set um, and knitting the large size, then you'll need some extra yarn. So just have a look at the meterage on the pattern uh, to decide how much yarn you need. And if you need some help thinking about um, extending it and uh, an additional yarn, then, then just uh, pop an email to me or to Elmarie. And my email address is bridget at cargirlblues.co.za. Um, and I am available this weekend. Um, you're very welcome to send me a message now or have a little chat um, if that would be helpful. I'm gonna put some headphones in so that I can hear what's going on. Um, and, and we can do that. Uh, and um, yeah, I can help with that uh, um, if you'd like to make some decisions. I am uh, scheduled to present again tomorrow and tomorrow I am a little bit later uh, I think this was at 10 a.m. Central Time. I'm at midday at 12 tomorrow, so 7 p.m. my time. Um, thank you very much, Karen. Uh, I really appreciate you coming to have a chat and join the presentation again. Thank you. It's very nice to see familiar faces coming back again. Um, and for anyone who is here joining us and would like some information emailed to you after the presentation, um, please just pop me an email, a message, a private message in the chat with your email address. And then I will send the email to you afterwards. Um, it's got links to all of the different patterns um, and projects and yarns. And then you also have my email address if you want to come back to me with any queries uh, or questions helping you figure, figure something out. Um, so yes, if anyone wants to unmute and have a chat, you're very welcome to do that. Um, if you've got specific questions, um, so. Hi. Hi, Bridget. How are you? I am good. Thank you. I'm not sure who I'm talking to. Okay. I'm Michelle from New York. Hello, Michelle. Hi. So I, I asked you the question about the baby blanket. Oh, right. Okay. So Michelle, I was a little confused by your question. Can you tell right. me the question again? So the directions say provisional cast on and then main color and color one. So I'm doing, am I doing provisional cast on and I'm taking the two colors and I'm, I'm casting on across and then I'm garter stitching with the, the first color. Um, I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. I need to actually look at the pattern um, just to, for, for it to make sense to me in terms of the pattern wording. Um, would you be able to pop your email address 
in a yes. private message to me and then I'll look at the pattern yeah. as soon as we finish and I'll All right. an email and, and, and then, explain. Would that help? Right. Yes. The, great. And then also my second question is, I know how to do the bobble. Is the bobble attached to the the slip stitch that is exactly. coming down? Exactly. So um, you are, uh, as you knit this section over here in the merino twist, you're slipping one stitch from the, D, from the DK row over here. And when you get to this next row of garter stitch and you're knitting the slip stitch back in again, you're making a bobble stitch with that slip stitch. All right, so you're going from the bottom to the top to yes. make that bobble in the slip stitch. Because, yes. you know, I understood, but the wording was a little bit, that's why I'm a little bit confused. So I'll pop you my email and Please. then if you have any. And yes. yeah, that was the reason why I didn't start the blanket because I kept on Because it was confusing. It, and I, I, okay. I'm sorry, but I really no, no. figure it. No, no, I really appreciate uh, the feedback that it was a little confusing. Thank you. And um, I will have a look in your email and then I can always make some adjustments onto the pattern just to clarify. So thank you. Yes, okay, please, great. Please I'm putting it email. in now. To yes, you. just pop me a private message with your email. All um, right, thank you. So I'm just uh, having a little look here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Barbara, you wanted to lengthen the pattern uh, yes I will um, I will get back to you on that one and then a couple more people have put the emails in um, so thank you for that yes absolutely um, uh, if you've put your email address in a private message to me that is um, that is perfect um, and I will send out an email when we have finished um, we finished our call this evening um, and it's got links to all of the different patterns and samples. So, um, so thank you for that. And the chat, uh, all of the text from the chat comes up in my uh, Zoom recording. So I can see if there's a little thread of conversation. I see that someone said um, in here that they gave me the wrong email address. I'll see the notification of that. So I'll get the right email address when you've put it in there. Um, yes, so thank you for that. Uh, so if, uh, if anyone wants a link to that recording then, and you haven't put your email address in already, then please, please just do that now. And uh, people have had specific questions they'd like help with and I will get back to you with those. Um, is there anyone else who has any specific uh, questions that they would like me to answer or samples that they would like to see again? Um, as someone, um, Barbara, was it you asking about the fade? Um, no, someone asked about customizing a color fade. Um, I'm just scrolling back to see if I can find that. I can't, but um, but I did talk a little bit about how I did that with my Lepouf cardigan. Uh, so if that wasn't enough and you have questions, then please uh, please just drop me an email or message and, and let me know and I'll be happy to, to try and answer that as best I can. Um, Thank you for the feedback. I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, and, and yes, please contact me about the Lepouf, um, the Lepouf sweater. Uh, and um, yes, I, I'm very open to any more questions uh, if, if, that would be, if that would be helpful. Um, if there's anyone who was here both yesterday and today, um, I would love to get some feedback about how you found the different way of presenting the yarns and the colors. Um, did you prefer seeing all the colors first and then the samples? Was it okay to show you, or was it okay, like I did today, to show you the samples and then reference the different colors as I went along? Um, you know, just, uh, it's, it's always nice to try and mix it up a little bit, um, but, um, but if it doesn't work for you, then please, please just let me know. Um, yeah. Uh, great, thank you. I'm very happy to send you the, um, the presentation link. Um, I'll put that onto YouTube a little later. Um, and thank you, uh, Natasha, you've said you like today's style. Um, I'm glad, thank you so much for that. Um, anyone else today, yesterday, if you were at both, um, uh, do just let me know because uh, this is really about um, what works for all of you in terms of showing you what we do um, and our yarns and telling you about Cargo Blues. So um, if this is a better way to do it, then, then that's good to know. Um, and, uh, and I will go with this uh, theme tomorrow um, in my presentation tomorrow. Now I've got to try and come up with something to show you tomorrow. 
um, that is a little bit different. Hmm, what will it be? Um, uh, anyone who's still here want to meet my dog? No? I can show you the husky. Okay. Um, so the camera will go a little blurry as I as I move it around, but it is a webcam, so I have a little bit of range of motion. Um, so you're seeing the floor. And then there is the husky. And um, she's a little bit camera shy, so she often looks away when there's a camera. Um, sorry, I've now got to turn the computer so I can see what you can see. Mira! Mira! Oh, hello! There's my beautiful blue eyed baby. Come and say hello. Come on. Come and say hi. Come and say hi. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yes, that's Mira, my fur baby. <laughs> um, thank you. I think she's pretty too. Uh, um, she's a very woofy beauty. Um, and uh, yes, she's telling me it's dinner time and walkies time. Um, it's not quite dark uh, here yet. It probably gets dark around 6.30 uh, or quarter to seven and uh, it's just after 6 p.m. now. So, um, so we'll take a little walk around the neighborhood um, and uh, scratch and sniff to see what has been happening since our last walk around the neighborhood. Um, any other questions or um, anything else anyone would like to know? Um, thank you, Denise. Uh, it's been lovely having you all in our presentation today. So thank you very much for coming. And um, I hope that uh, you've liked what you've seen and that you will be having a look at our website and, um, and seeing if you can find a project um, that will keep your fingers busy for the next little while.